Welcome everyone to the Biological Wastewater Treatment online course series based on the book of Biological Wastewater Treatment Principles, Modeling and Design. My name is uh, Ferenc Hazi and uh, I'm going to navigate you through the waters of chapter 12, Final Settling, uh, in this video series. The authors of the chapter are George Ekoma and uh, Imre Tokac. Um, Professor Ekoma was uh, the head of the department at the University of, uh, of Cape Town and uh, he passed early 2023. Imre Tokac has a degree in bioengineering from the University of Budapest and a PhD from the University of Ghent. He's the founder and CEO of uh, Dynamita in France. Uh, this is a picture from their last meeting at the VRR Mod conference in Cape Town, South Africa in January 2023. And uh, before I introduce myself, I, I'm going to share a short video from Imre, where he talks about the time he was working with uh, Professor Ekama on this chapter. And this is possible because I'm privileged to work with Imre for the last few years. Yeah, the settling chapter in this book started uh, with uh, some some work that I did on settling and uh, actually effluent predictions in the late 80s, early very early 90s became a paper, and then uh, Dami Razmi, uh, thinking that I am a, a settling settling expert. To, to generate this uh, book chapter and and luckily George Ekoma was there to help me I wrote the first uh, first uh, draft and uh, obviously George had like a hundred times more knowledge than I did about the topic and uh, I wrote the draft it came back with a thousand suggestions and all were valid, valid of, co of course so it was a good uh, uh, eventually turned into a good chapter uh, i know jo uh, george for a long time even during the time where he still had his hair uh, we met in a conference in budapest first we had some ice cream in St. Andre, in a little picturesque village. And there he met Hungarian culture face on. He said, for the ice cream, Whoa, that's loaded with sugar. And finally I was able to say goodbye to him in South Africa in January 2023, last year. And he remembered the cigar, the place where we are visited and he looked at the treatment plant that serves 150 people without electricity and with the requirement of one sample a year. What a man this was, he was. MMG, a most modest giant. I will be forever grateful for the opportunity to know him. Thank you, Imre. Uh, what you will see in this series, uh, all that I learned from them. Thank you for that. A few words about, uh, about myself. I have a master's degree in environmental engineering uh, from the Budapest University of Technology and, uh, and Economics. And I've spent the last decade, decade working uh, around wastewater. And I get the chance to, to work with Imre at Dynamita as a, as a process engineer in the field of, uh, of process modeling. And uh, before we, we dig deep into this, uh, uh, this chapter, into, into final settling, we will go through the terminology to, to learn the common uh, expressions we use in this chapter. We will look into this uh, terminology on a, on a really simple layout of a, of a treatment plant 
it can influence the the reactors, uh, the final settlers, secondary settlers, or final clarifiers or secondary uh, clarifiers. These uh, expressions are used uh, interchangeably for the process in the treatment change, uh, treatment chain in this session and uh, and in the book. <coughs> The next one uh, we have to be familiar is uh, is the sludge or the mixed uh, liquor suspended uh, solids or MLSS as we frequently refer to it. We try to avoid to use uh, the biomass expression as it refers only to the biological active microorganisms of the sludge while the sludge itself contains a lot of other suspended uh, fractions in it. The sludge is typically measured in, uh, in mass uh, or in concentration mass in a unit of, uh, of volume. The recycle flow or underflow or, uh, or return flow has the same meaning. The, the sludge flow from, uh, from the clarifier from the bottom of the of the clarifier, uh, which is removed uh, from there, and some part of it is returned back to the the reactors. Uh, this is a liquid flow and uh, typically measured in uh, in uh, unit volume over uh, unit of time. The last one, the most important uh, one for this uh, for this chapter, is uh, the flux. In uh, in process engineering, we are talking about mass rates, uh, which is a transport and mass in uh, in a unit amount of uh, of time. However, in settling, it is uh, useful to use the term flux, which is uh, similar to mass rate. Uh, Flux is, uh, is measured in uh, kilograms per square meter per hour and it refers uh, to the solid load uh, of, the, of the clarifier, the unit mass transported through a unit surface in a unit of time. On this slide uh, there is a very brief review of the symbol symbols used in this uh, this chapter uh, we already mentioned the flow and uh, how it is uh, is expressed as uh, cubic meters per hour uh, we differentiate it with from the flow rate with a uh, small uh, with the letter of small uh, q which is the loading rate or hydraulic uh, loading rate and it is a flow over a unit area. Uh, of course we will use the solids concentration. Uh, in this chapter we discussed uh, the importance of the flux and we will use the velocity and the area of the, the clarifier. The full nomenclature for this session is available in, uh, in the book at the end of the, the chapter. I'd like to point out the topics of, uh, of the final settling uh, chapter, just as a quick, uh, quick outline. This uh, session is about the introduction to cover the basics of, uh, of the chapter, and then we will look into the uh, settling texts in practice, where are they, how they look, uh, how engineers uh, design and construct them. The following chapter will, uh, will give an insight into the different measurements uh, of uh, sludge uh, settleability, how to measure the properties of the sludge uh, we are working with, we will look into it in, uh, in details. The next chapter is, will be the flux theory to, to see how, these, how the measurements, how the specification of the sludge can be used 
to, to build a theory which describes the, the settling process. The design and operation chapter will use the flux theory and other methods in practice uh, for clarifier design and operational purposes. <coughs> and uh, in the last uh, part we will look into the modeling of, uh, of secondary settlers, how the mathematical models are built and used uh, for, sign, uh, for final uh, settlers. So let's, let's look into today's uh, session. In, uh, in this part we will uh, identify the objective of settlings we will uh, talk about the clarifiers, where are they, mm, how they look, and so on. And uh, we will understand the functions of the secondary, secondary settling tanks. So, what is the objective of, uh, of settling? It is to, to separate solids mass uh, from the liquid. This way to provide uh, uh, low solids concentration for the treated water for the effluent. The solids, what you can see on this picture, mostly consists of, uh, of microorganisms. We are growing in the biological reactors for the treatment pro uh, purposes. These bacteria are, are quite small uh, on the micrometer range and the they density is very, very close to, to water. Luckily, they are flocculent in nature. You see uh, what kind of flocks uh, they are uh, building during the flocculation uh, process. So they are flocculent in, uh, in nature and they will uh, readily form these, uh, these larger flocks that can be settled from the water in the clarifiers. As even with the flocks, the, the density difference is margin marginal to the water. The settling, the settling velocity is uh, is very small, and that is why uh, these uh, large units are installed. So let's look at where these large units are uh, are installed, and they can be found everywhere. I I came up with a picture from uh, from uh, from Budapest, which uh, shows one of the the treatment plants of uh, of the city, and as you can see, it uh, it uh, it occupies a quite big area with uh, with large cylindric uh, uh, circular uh, objects in in uh, at this uh, this plant. There are six uh, secondary clarifiers at these specific plants, as I, uh, I know this plant, uh, it has uh, six mm, parallel uh, treatment lines, each two of them has a primary settler, the other uh, large circular objects, then the, the biological reactors are covered in, uh, uh, in, uh, in, grease house, uh, in, uh, in greenhouses, and then uh, each line has a final settler here, pretty close to, to the housing uh, in the city. Uh, they are close uh, to the city to, um, to minimize the transport <coughs> cost of, uh, of the um, wastewater to the plant. And uh, the secondary clarifiers are large because uh, every person living in a city with a proper sewer system would need about 10 to 15 square centimeter of area to clarify the wastewater that uh, he or she produces. And this, this is why these, uh, these units are, are so large. How they just take a closer look at them. This is a clarifier under, uh, under construction. You can see the bottom. Uh, of the unit and uh, you can see the wall and the bridge uh, over it 
and uh, you can identify the the size that uh, yeah they are extremely uh, large in some cases let's look into the different functions of uh, the secondary uh, settling tanks we can three we can identify three different uh, roles for, for them the first one is the clarification we already mentioned to to produce the effluent separate solids uh, from uh, from the the water phase thus providing clear uh, effluent of the uh, of the plant the second one is the thickening uh, of the solids to produce uh, the the return sludge and the third one is, uh, is sludge storage clarification uh, removing uh, MLSS from uh, from the wastewater to to generate uh, very low effluent solid uh, concentration the MLSS we usually have two to four thousand milligram per liter suspended solids in the reactor and the typical well-designed and well-operated clarifier will produce five to fifteen milligram per liter milligrams per liter effluent uh, solids so the re removal efficiency has to be up to 99.9 percent or uh, or so so a very very high uh, efficiency is required by these uh, units this efficiency can be influenced by the design and operation of the plant there are two factors we can use to our advantage to ascertain the, that this high efficiency will actually occur in the clarifier the first one that uh, we need to be able to flocculate the bacteria coming in from uh, from the reactors and we would like to distribute that uh, large flow that is coming from the reactors as uniformly as possible the uniform flow distribution will help to maintain the higher efficiency settling in uh, in the clarifier we need to to maintain the the high efficiency solids removal uh, as high as uh, as possible because it really impacts the uh, the effluent quality so the the effluent uh, total suspended solids impacts the effluent quality in other ways as well uh, effluent BOD and COD will uh, of course increase if there is more solids in uh, the effluent total phosphorus will increase as well and total nitrogen uh, a little bit smaller degree so this is the uh, the other reason to maintain as high efficiency in the clarifiers as it is uh, possible the second function we talk we are talking about is uh, is thickening it is the the functionality uh, to to produce uh, the return activated sludge and uh, and we would like to uh, to get as thick sludge as uh, as possible because this way the the rest flow will be as little as possible um, the reason behind this is that uh, pumping sludge flow costs money and uh, and also a uh, higher flow higher return activated sludge flow will add uh, add extra kinetic energy into the settling tank and it disturbs the flow distribution in our or clarifier thus lowering the efficiency the third function is, uh, is sludge storage and uh, here there is an important message that we must to remember that uh, the clarifier is uh, is not a reactor but occasionally after a storm or a diurnal peak flow some sludge may be transferred into the, the clarifier and it has to be caught there and hold there until uh, hold there temporarily until it can 
can be returned into the, the reactors. The clarifier should provide this temporary sludge storage functionality and in some cases it is even designed uh, in a way to, to provide this, uh, this functionality this, uh, uh, that we will see later. Uh, and uh, that's uh, uh, the purpose of, uh, of the sludge storage, mm, for example, in that case can be uh, blanket blanket filtration, for example. In this session we learn the purpose and major specifications mm, and functions of, uh, of secondary settlers and in the next session we will go look into the details by look at uh, the clarifiers in practice. Thank you for your attention.